Hello everyone and welcome to Nerdy Eddie Academy. Today we're going to be studying or reviewing electrolytic cell calculations. We're going to be looking at coulombs, faraday, and moles of electrons. Let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Here's our first example. It says calculate the moles of silver produced at the cathode when performing an electrolysis uh, on a solution of silver nitrate using a current of 10 amperes for three and a half hours. So first thing we're going to need is our equation which is a charge is equal to our current uh, times time our current being in coulombs or sorry charge in coulombs our current in amperes and our time in seconds so looking at this question we actually have uh, amperes and we have our time it's just not in seconds but we can change that it's not a problem <coughs> We're also going to need Faraday's constant, which is that there are 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. Uh, okay, uh, we also need the half equation for this reaction. Uh, we know that silver nitrate is AgNO3, meaning NO3 has a charge of uh, negative 1. So our silver has a charge of positive one. So our half reaction then must be uh, silver plus one is going to turn into, this is aqueous, so let's go ahead and write that, is going to turn into silver solid. That means that for this to happen, we need one electron uh, for every silver. In other words, we need one mole of electrons for every mole of silver we're producing. So let's go ahead and answer this or figure this out. <coughs> So we have these two units, so we can go ahead and solve for our charge, aka our coulombs. So we'll go ahead and plug in our current, which is 10 amperes, times time, which we don't have in seconds, so we need to figure this out. Uh, my go-to is always dimensional analysis, so let's go ahead and do that. We have three and a half hours, 3.5 hours. Now as far as changing this up, we know that for every hour, there are 3,600 seconds. We know this because there are 60 seconds in a minute, there are 60 minutes in an hour, 60 times 60 is uh, 3,600. So we figure this out, we just have to multiply because this cancels our hour. <coughs> Same amount of time has passed, it will be 3.5 uh, 3 times 3,600. So that means that we've had 12,600 seconds pass in this time. So that's what we fit right in here. So let's squeeze that in there. And that's it for that equation. So easy enough, times 10. So nothing really changes except we're adding zero. So it's going to be 126,000 uh, coulombs. Is now what we have. And again, we want moles. That's what our equation says of silver that we're producing. <coughs> We know that, uh, based on Faraday's constant, that there are 96,500 uh, coulombs for every mole uh, of electrons that we're producing. And on based on our little half equation that we have here, it's uh, one mole of electrons for every mole of silver that we're producing. So at that point, we would do this math, which I'll squeeze down here. So it ended up being 126,000 divided by 96,500. And then times one, so nothing changes. So our answer is 1.31 approximately moles of silver. And again, I like doing uh, the math this way because I can see coulombs cancel coulombs. Moles of electrons cancel moles of electrons, and what I'm left with is moles of silver, which is exactly what they wanted. So that would answer that question. It would be done for that question. <coughs> and here's our second example. It's a continuation of the previous question. It says, how much time would you need to produce 200 grams of silver using the previous conditions? Our previous conditions... Uh, where that we had 10 amperes and then we worked for 3.5 hours and then we had silver nitrate now since they're asking how much time we don't 
care about the time because that's what we're going to find out. Uh, we do, of course, still care about this, which we had written our half equation was uh, silver positive. That's aqueous. We need one electron, uh, one mole of electrons to get one mole of silver solid. So we're still going to go through the same process of using our, our charge equation. Charge is equal to current uh, times time. Uh, but we're going to work a little bit backwards. In this case, we're starting at 200 grams because this is the amount that we want. We really need that much. So we're going to go ahead and start there. 200 grams of silver. So let's use our units first. I need to cancel grams of silver, which would get me to moles of silver. At which point I need to get rid of moles of silver because remember this, this equation is all by charge and Faraday's constant tells us that we need moles of electrons. So we'll get to moles of electron. You notice I'm not putting any numbers yet because I actually don't need to. Once I'm in moles of electrons, based on Faraday's constant, I know that um, there are 96,500 coulombs for every mole of electrons. This would get me to coulombs, which we can then plug into our equation. So we can actually stop here to get coulombs. Now we can plug in our values. For the center one, we're going to be fitting in our moles of electrons per mole of silver. This comes from this equation right here. And for every one of electrons, we get one of silver. And then for this part right here, actually just using molar mass or molecular weight, which is for every one mole of silver, you have about a hundred and we can go ahead and round 108 grams of silver quite a lot actually <clears throat> so at this point we can do our math uh, again we did units first because we figure this out we see that these units all cancel and we're left with coulombs which we can then plug into our equation so we're going to go ahead and do that so that's going to be 200 divided by 108 times 1, so that changes nothing, times 96,500, which gives us an exceedingly large number, which is 1.7867 uh, you can round it there, times 10 to the 5 coulombs. It's a lot of coulombs, but they don't want that, they want time. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. We know that time is in seconds. Uh, they didn't specify, so we could just leave it in seconds. <clears throat> Current, we do have. It's 10, which we found, or they gave us before. And now we do have charge, so we have to rearrange this equation. So in this case, it's going to be time equals uh, our charge over current. In other words, the time this is going to take, which will be in seconds, is going to equal what we just figured out. 10 to the 5 coulomb over the current, which in this case is 10 amperes. So we'll go ahead and work that out. We find that it's still going to take us a long time in terms of seconds. It's going to be 1.787, still hasn't changed, times 10 to the 4 seconds. Still a very long time. So let's try to work it into an amount of time that makes sense to us, <coughs> which we could do with dimensional analysis again. So let's go ahead and just move this up, give ourselves a little bit of room. So let's go ahead and see. So we got Point seven eight seven times 10 to the 4 seconds. If we want to change that into, let's say, minutes, or let's, let's go into hours. And previously we had seen that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. So this amount of seconds would be 4.9 six, let's round it there, 4.96 hours. 
to get this completed. So about five hours to get this many grams, which I mean, is not terribly longer than the previous, but it's a, it's a lot of time you're going to be running this for. Now our last example that we're going to look at, <coughs> it's completely different one, says what volume of oxygen would be produced if 0.42 amperes of current was used to electrolyze a solution of sodium sulfate for 37 hours. I assume you're working at room temperature pressure. Room temperature and pressure just tells us that we have 24 decimeters cubed, aka liters, of gas per mole. Or for every one mole of gas, it's uh, going to take up 24 liters. <clears throat> we also need our previous equation, which is charge is equal to current times time. Uh, okay, so they give us time, they give us current, so we can very quickly find charge. Again, Faraday's constant is 96,500 uh, coulombs per mole of electrons. Uh, in this case, they want to know how much oxygen is being produced from sodium sulfate. The equation actually comes from your, you can use the reduction potential list. And you'll see that oxygen is produced from, uh, sorry, got this out. It's produced from hydroxide. And in this case, you see that there are four electrons that are needed for every mole of oxygen. This is pretty much all we need. So let's go ahead and work it out. <coughs> uh, first, let's plug it into this equation. We have 0 0.42 amperes uh, times. I'm just going to give us our Q. <coughs> 37 hours. So let's go ahead and change 37 hours because we haven't done that. So 37 hours. As we previously saw, every hour is 36 hundred seconds. So this number we're going to plug it right here, which that turns out to be 1.332 times 10 to the 5 seconds, which means that we have a total of 5.5944 times 10 to the 4 coulombs. Okay, we want to keep as many decimals. We don't really want to round them to the very end. <coughs> so that's how many coulombs. So we can actually start there to do our dimensional analysis. So 5.5944 times 10. It's an awful 10. To the 4 coulombs. We want to get rid of coulombs. And we can use Faraday's constant, which is that there are... Uh, 96,500 coulombs per mole. And that's moles of electron. We want to get rid of that, so mole of electrons. And based on this equation right here, four moles of electrons are needed for every one mole of oxygen. And they want volume. And actually, that's why we wrote this right here. We see that for every one mole, of a gas at room temperature pressure, in this case it's oxygen, it is going to take up 24 decimeters cubed of space. Uh, so when we check, we see coulombs, cancel coulombs, mole, 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 we're left with a unit of volume, which is what we want, so that will give us our answer. So we'll go ahead and write that out down here. So this comes out to be, first we divide the 5.5944 times 10 to the 4th, divided by 96,500. Divide that by 4, and then multiply that by 24. That gives us 3.47, so we can run out to 3.5 liters. So 3.5 liters of oxygen is what we will have after 37 hours of doing this. Not a whole lot. Um, but that's pretty simple. Most of it's just knowing this equation, knowing this unit, and then just plugging in and keeping track of your units. If you are very good at this whole dimensional analysis setup, it really does make your life so much easier.
Okay. Uh, feel free to comment. Let me know if uh, this was helpful. Uh, feel free to ask for other videos. And hopefully I will see you guys all soon. Thank you. And have a wonderful rest of your day.